with the right gear, preparation, and knowledge. Caving can be a very safe activity. There are a few books and websites that describe the equipment needed and the general steps that should be taken to cave safely and with low impact. But it is still a great idea to take your first few wild caving trips with an experienced group. The permission that may be required, the appropriate gear and clothing, the route finding difficulties, and the risks and challenges that you may encounter are going to be somewhat unique to each individual cave. Finding an experienced trip leader that understands the local requirements and best practices is the best way to have a safe, fun, and rewarding trip. Once you've identified an individual, grotto, or other group that can offer you a beginner caving trip, find out what will be involved in terms of the hike to the cave, the length of trip, the climbing and crawling requirements, and some idea about how much dirt or mud will be encountered. Make sure that what is being proposed is within your abilities both physically and in terms of managing any fears you may have. It's normal for new cavers to have at least some concern about tight spaces, exposure to heights, getting wet, dirty, and potentially cold, getting lost, and being in total darkness. Part of the reward of caving is overcoming challenges that you may not face in other parts of your life, but your first few trips should have the balance tip strongly in favor of having fun. Before heading to the cave, check that your group has the proper permissions. In some areas of the country, most caves are on privately owned land, whereas in other areas, most caves are on public land. Before visiting any privately owned cave, be sure you have permission from the landowner and know exactly what rules and expectations are in place. This might include how to communicate with the landowner, what time of day you are allowed to visit, where to park, where to change into and out of caving gear, what route to take to the entrance, how to behave in the cave, and whether or not it's acceptable to share information about the trip. For caves on public land, get authorization or a permit if required, and be sure to comply with all the rules and regulations. White nose syndrome is a fungal disease that has been devastating to bats in North America. Don't take any gear into a cave that has been in another cave without first cleaning and decontaminating following the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service protocol to prevent the possibility of unintentional transmission of the disease. This is a best practice for any cave and a requirement for most caves on public land. If you're visiting a cave that is flood prone, then be sure to check the weather forecast and have a contingency plan if the forecast proves to be inaccurate. Ensure that your group has a surface watch. This is a responsible person who will not be on the trip who has given clear instructions about where you are going, when you will return, and who to call if you don't contact them by a predetermined time. Disclose any health issues to the trip leader before the trip. Make sure they're aware of any medications you're taking and any physical limitations you may have. Finally, never cave alone. While caving is usually very safe, getting lost or injured in a cave when you're by yourself changes your odds significantly. Once you have your first caving trip scheduled, you'll need to get the proper clothing and gear. For an introductory horizontal trip, there is very little specialized gear required. Commercially guided wild tours, as well as many grottos, outdoor programs, or scouting groups will have gear for you to borrow. A helmet and helmet mounted headlamp are critical. A helmet protects your head from bumping the ceiling or walls, from impacts in the event of a slip, trip, or fall, or from rock fall. A helmet also provides a convenient place to mount a headlamp. A headlamp allows you to shine your light wherever you turn your head to look, and it keeps your hands free for crawling and climbing. In most caves, you'll also want knee and elbow pads and a pair of gloves. Footwear should be supportive and have good traction. The clothing you'll want to wear depends heavily on the cave you're visiting. The temperature of the cave, the amount of water or mud, and the pace and difficulty of the trip will all affect what is appropriate to wear. Your trip leader will be able to recommend appropriate clothing, but as with most outdoor activities, dressing in layers and avoiding cotton is usually a best practice. A small pack is a good idea for carrying a few extra items that usually don't fit in pockets. 
Depending on the length of the trip, it's a good idea to have some food and water, and it's also wise to carry extra batteries and light sources. At least one person on the trip should have a small repair and first aid kit, and the training to use it. You should carry all trash out of the cave, but for most caves on public land, and in any cave that is dry, you should plan to carry all human waste out as well. If you find any trash left behind by others, then also carry that out. Optional things to bring might be a compass and map to help with orientation, and a camera to capture memories. Whatever clothing and gear you take into a cave, you should expect it to get dirty and take a lot of abuse. Expensive mountaineering boots, Gore-Tex jackets, and unprotected cameras will not last long on a caving trip. During your first wild cave trip, there are a few things you can do to be safe and minimize your impact to the cave. Stay within the limits of the team in terms of the length and speed of the trip, as well as the hazards and obstacles that must be overcome. Communicate any personal concerns to the trip leader and keep an eye on other team members to ensure they are enjoying themselves. Make sure the team stays together and that there is an accurate head count, especially with larger groups. It's a good practice to put the most experienced cavers at the front and back of the group and keep in contact with those in front and behind you. If a map of the cave is available, then refer to it often to track your progress and location. A compass can be a big help in orienting yourself to the map. Watch carefully for unique landmarks as you travel through the cave, especially at passage junctions, and look behind you frequently because the cave passage always looks different when facing the opposite direction. Challenge yourself to remember the route taken so that you know it well enough to be able to lead the way out. Tread lightly and make an effort to leave no trace. Follow established trails, especially in dry passages, and avoid touching formations or areas of the cave that have not been touched before. If you're interested in learning more about caving and opportunities for taking your first wild cave trip, then visit the National Speleological Society website at caves.org. Click the button that says find a caving club near you to learn about nearby grottos and attend a meeting. Also click the button to download a guide to responsible caving and read this excellent publication which gives an overview of caves and caving. <laughs>